In this video, I'm going to show you how to build this 2-inch FPV drone with an open IPC digital video system. That's right, this tiny little drone is running open IPC software with the hardware made by Emacs called the Wyvern Link. And because open IPC is so new, let's first go on a quick flight with it while we talk about what open IPC is. Open IPC is a wireless digital video product that's trying to bring low-cost, open-source HD video to our FPV drones. Because it's open source, the best minds in the world can help contribute to the software, and any manufacturer is free to make hardware for it. We've already seen great things come out of open source projects, namely the hugely popular Express LRS radio system that almost everyone uses in their drones today. And so OpenIPC is going down the same track, and hopefully soon we'll have a really robust and low-cost HD digital video system. But today, OpenIPC is still very much in its early stages. It's not really meant for mainstream use like ExpressLRS is. If you look up OpenIPC guides right now, there's a lot of crazy wiring and SSHing into boards with terminal. It's not exactly ideal as an everyday consumer product. But since it's open source, anyone can make their own hardware for it, and so Emacs has created this, the Wyvern Link system that runs on OpenIPC software. As of today, they're offering two transmitters and two receivers. There's an 800 milliwatt high power transmitter as well as a smaller 100 milliwatt transmitter. The 800 milliwatt comes with a standard 19 millimeter wide micro camera which is connected to two boards, a recording board with a micro SD slot, and then a transmitter board with the antennas. The smaller 100 milliwatt unit comes with a 14 millimeter wide nano camera, and the transmission board has standard 25 millimeter spacing holes, which makes it a perfect drop-in fit for many small drones. That's the one we'll be using in our 2-inch drone. For receivers, they have a high sensitivity receiver and a normal sensitivity receiver. I'll be using the normal one. The receivers output video via a USB-C port, so you can connect it to your Android phone running a special app called Pixel Pilot. This app is also part of the OpenIPC project, so it's specifically designed to have very low latency. One caveat though is that the app is still very much in development and it doesn't support every single phone out there. If you have a relatively modern phone from the last couple of years, you should be good. I'm using a Google Pixel 9. iPhone users are unfortunately out of luck at the moment because there's no iPhone app. Overall, this phone-based system is surprisingly good and I think it's better than the traditional way of using OpenIPC, which is through a laptop. And now that we have a general understanding of how OpenIPC works, let's get on to the build. The frame is an Apex 2-inch frame, which costs about $10. The flight controller is a JHEMCU F411 all-in-one board, and it has the Express LRS receiver built in. The motors are Yusido 1103 motors, and I'm using the 7500 kV versions. For props, either 4 or 5-bladed Gemfan Cinewhoop props work great. And for our video system, we're using the Emacs Wyvern Link 100 milliwatt transmitter along with the Wyvern Link receiver. For battery, I'm using a Tattoo 2S 650 milliamp hour pack. And to control the drone, I'm using a Radio Master Pocket Express LRS version. Now, we will need a few odds and ends to finish this build, including an XT30 connector, 20 gauge silicone wire, an M2 screw kit, an M1.4 screw kit, and M2 silicone gummies. Those are all the parts we need for this build, and I'll link to them all in the description below. If this drone looks familiar to you, it's because it's based on the earlier drone I built, the $100 2-inch FPV drone with an analog video system. You can reference that video for a more in-depth guide on soldering the drone, since the soldering can get a little tricky. The first part of this build will be exactly the same as that one, the only thing different is that we're installing the Wyvern Link video system instead of the analog video system. So the first step of the build is to assemble the frame. It doesn't come with instructions, so reference the listing photos on the AliExpress website to see where everything goes. Next, it's time to do a dry fit of all the components on the frame. Screw the motors on, then screw the flight controller and Wyvern Link in. The flight controller comes with red grommets for mounting, but the Wyvern Link doesn't. I had to use my own M2 gummies on the Wyvern Link to get it mounted. The Wyvern Link camera is a little bit of an oddball and caused me some unexpected headache. Normally, cameras use M2 screws for mounting, but the Wyvern camera uses M1.4 screws, which are absolutely tiny. Now, the Wyvern does come with some M1.4 screws for mounting, but they're really, really short. They're only about 3 millimeters long, while for this frame, we need more something like 6 millimeters long. I'm normally really prepared for anything, but I never expected to need long M1.4 screws, and so instead of waiting for an order of screws to arrive, I busted out my 3D printer and designed new camera inserts for the frame that are shallower so that I could use the included short M1.4 screws. I'll drop a link to the STL in the description. This is definitely a workaround solution, and so if you can, just buy the right screws in the first place. 
Now that everything is mounted and we know where exactly everything will be, it's time to bust out the soldering iron and get it all wired up. First, solder an XT30 connector and cable to the flight controller. Next, solder the four motors to the flight controller. Soldering the motors is the most challenging part of this build, so take your time. Next, it's time to solder up the wyvern link. There are four connections to make, 5 volts, ground, RX, and TX. I'll put the full wiring diagram in the video description below. The wyvern link comes with a cable that you can plug into the board, and you could just solder the other end of it to the flight controller. I used the cable in testing on a different flight controller, and so I chose to wire this one directly, 5 volts to 5 volts, ground to ground, TX2 to RX2, and RX2 to TX2. And that's all the wiring we need to do. Button the drone back up, and it's time to set it up in beta flight. The setup is mostly the same as the analog version of the drone, so I'll point you over to that video to bind the receiver and set up the motors. The only thing different in this drone is the video system. It's really easy to set up, just go to the presets tab and find the HD video preset for O3 or Avatar. This will work perfectly with our Wyvern link. Select the preset for UART2 and apply it and save. Afterwards, you can go into the OSD tab and set up your OSD. For some reason, there's a bug on my version of Betaflight, so I have to power cycle the quad before the HD OSD actually kicks in. But after a power cycle, I'm free to set up the OSD. That's all the setup we need to do on the drone. Now let's set up the receiver. First, go to the OpenIPC GitHub and find the PixelPilot repository. Download and install the PixelPilot APK file. Open PixelPilot, then open up the settings and set the channel to 132. Channel 132 is the default that the Emacs Wyvern link comes with. Next, it's time to power the receiver. Find the XT30 connector on the receiver and power it with a LiPo from 2S to 6S. Make sure to plug it in the right way since it's really easy to accidentally plug it in backwards and fry the entire thing. I definitely recommend using a Sharpie or something to mark the positive side since it's hard to tell just by looking at the case. There's also a USB port next to the XT30 so you can power it through that as well, but I just find the battery to be more convenient. On a different side of the receiver is another USB-C port, one that's by itself. That's the port you need to connect to your phone. Note that you're going to need a USB on-the-go or OTG cable to connect it to your phone. The Wyvern link should come with an OTG cable that you can use. Now a big disclaimer, you need to wait one full minute in between powering up the receiver and then plugging it into your phone. This software and hardware is still all very much in development and this waiting period is being worked on, but for now, to be safe, plug in the battery to the receiver and set a timer for one minute. Only after the minute is up should you plug it into your phone and open Pixel Pilot. If you don't wait the minute, nothing's gonna fry, but you'll just never ever get the video feed onto your phone and you'll be wondering why it's not working. So once your receiver is set up, you can plug in your drone and after about 20 seconds or so, you should see a video feed in your phone. Pretty cool, a fully functional open IPC digital setup without needing to SSH or root or terminal into anything. It's just plug and play. And here's an overview of our complete setup. Here's our two inch drone with the Emacs Wyvern link that's controlled by a Radio Master Pocket Radio and we're viewing the video feed on a phone with the Wyvern link receiver. If you want a bigger screen, you could also hook it up to an Android tablet instead of a phone. I'm also on the lookout for a phone mount for the Radio Master Pocket so that I could have a nice and portable monitor setup like some other radios can do. Anyways, now that's all built, let's take it on a flight. Latency wise, this setup is excellent. The OpenIPC and Pixelpilot developers definitely have low latency as a development priority because even though this video feed is being played through a phone, I can't really notice any excessive lag. And if I had to guess, the latency would be anywhere from about 20 to 30 milliseconds, which is on par with DJI or walk snail systems. I had no issues with the signal strength either, although I didn't really take it out that far. And to be clear, this is all still very much in development. The software is constantly changing and improving. And if you want to be a part of that improvement process, the Wyvern Link Air units do come with an Ethernet and USB debugging board, which lets you change the settings and upload custom firmware to it. It's not mandatory though, I'm just using it as is out of the box and it just works. And even though this Wyvern Link hardware is also listed as an alpha product, I'm really amazed that they can sell it for so cheap. As of right now, this 100 milliwatt air unit with the camera and the transmitter, it costs just $70, which is already cheaper than any other digital system. And on top of that, there's massive savings on the receiver side. So this Wyvern Link receiver, it costs only $40. Of course, it doesn't have a display built into it, but everyone has a smartphone these days. And so it's a huge savings compared to every single other digital video receiver since they all start at $200 and they only go up from there. So yeah, a $70 transmitter and a $40 receiver, and you have a fully open source, low latency digital system, and it's only going to get better from there. 
Overall, I'm pretty excited with where the OpenIPC project is going. It definitely has the potential to be the next big thing like ExpressLRS. And maybe one day, analog video won't be the only budget option. At this rate, it really seems like budget digital video is right on the horizon. And if you want to get in on it early like me, the Emacs Wyvern link is definitely the easiest option as it doesn't require a software engineering degree just to set up. Also shout out to Emacs, I asked them if they could send me one Wyvern link setup to do a build with, and they sent me both the 100 milliwatt one, which I'm using right now, as well as the higher power 800 milliwatt one. So let me know in the comments what you want me to do with the higher power setup. Maybe I'll do an open IPC long range build. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I'd really appreciate it if you could subscribe to my YouTube channel.